breakfast. Fresh caught fish, form fresh free range chicken eggs. Outdoor cooking. Yo, Adrian, teach Rocky how to cook. You won't have to eat them raw. Can I shoot a 40 Smith & Wesson round through my Glock factory Glock 20 10 millimeter barrel? Well, maybe. Physically it works. But I, this is the reason why I'm not going to do it. We have 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter on the left. 40 Smith & Wesson on the right. See how long, much longer it is. Technically it's the same diameter. 0.400. But this is why I'm not going to do it. 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter barrel. That's how it sits in the gun. Notice the gap. The extractor fits in that gap. After it's fired, pulls it out, puts another one in, and it stays on that gap while it's inside the barrel. This is a conversion barrel, Glock 20 to a Ford Smith & Wesson. 10 millimeter round, look how far it sticks out. Forty Smith and Wesson round. If it's just like this, just like ten millimeter does. But when you take the forty Smith and Wesson and put it in a ten millimeter barrel, which a lot of people on YouTube are saying, yeah, you can do it. But this is the reason why I'm not going to do it. It disappears. That means you got that much room so your extractor is going to be holding it out the whole time. You're going to fire around. It's got to travel from the end of here. There's a groove in there. It's got to jump from the end of the bullet into the groove which has a chance it could be hitting that the chamber I'm not going to put stress on this part just to shoot a smaller round that's why I went ahead and spent $120 and bought a, a barrel that's made for that Here's some information that most people don't, the average shooter don't get, unless you're a reloader. Ten millimeter automatic. The length of the case, 0.92992. Forty Smith and Wesson, 0.850. That is a difference of 0.142 of an inch or 3.62 millimeter. That means it has to jump from here to it hits the end of the chamber that far. Then it hits the grooves, the rifling. Here's a closer example. Your average 9mm that most people shoot here. They're both the same diameter. 0.355 and a 380. Same diameter as a 9mm. It's actually called 9mm in foreign countries. Their difference is only 1.86mm. But that 
that does cost more than that. That's probably why people don't do it. It's easier to do it that way. So you got your 380. That's some diameter. 0.355 length of the carcass 0 0.680 then you have your 9 by 19 or 9 millimeter Luger same diameter 0.355 they use the same bullet but since the powder is different they use a different weight and that's the length 0.754 now then, after it's in the barrel and you done pulled around out of the magazine that's how it sits when it's ready to fire it's got a hook on it there and it sits there waiting for the trigger to be pulled Same thing with the 40 Smith & Wesson. It's going to sit in the extractor just like that. But you got that much more length. To make that bullet jump. From the shell to the rifling. It's not going to blow up or anything. It's, it still works. But I'm not going to put stress on that and extra stress on the barrel. Because I don't know exactly what it's going to do. I'm not a scientist. But I just go ahead and get a conversion barrel and put in there. That way you won't be wearing this out. Might have to change that. Might mess up your chamber. So I'd rather have this sitting all up against the edge of the chamber and this part sits in the rifling. See how it's smaller. I'm just showing you a little info. Do what you want. It's your your gun, you can do it. But that's why I'm not going to do it.